Hello and welcome to another FPL video. It's the business end of pre-season with only a week and a half remaining until game week one kicks off and I thought it'd be time to dive into a bit more detail around some of the key players and teams. Uh, if you like the following content, content please do give this video a like and subscribe for more videos coming out in future. Now the big one Holland, no Holland in my team. Yes I'm going against 58.6% of the game currently recording this on Tuesday the 26th and my reasoning for dodging Holland at the start is purely down to minutes. Uh, Pre-season in the first of three preseason games that Man City are playing before game week one. Haaland completely missed the first game. He was sitting on the bench in casual clothes. Uh, he was not getting onto the pitch. And in the game against Bayern Munich, a pretty decent opponent, uh, he did not complete the full 90. He's also had um, comments from either him or his agent saying that part of the reasoning behind going to Man City is the lack of preseason and uh, more rotation so that he, he he's been carrying a few niggles um, from last year and wanted a team where he wasn't going to be flogged. Um, I think was the words that came out of his mouth. And that immediately puts me in doubt on whether or not He's a viable option to start the game with. My strategy for the first six weeks or so is going to be a rotation of captains between Salah and a City player, just based on fixtures. And so I really need a City player in the squad, which I will be comfortable captaining. That fall, that job will fall to KDB. Uh, the, the reasoning why I am a, a lot more assured of KDB is obviously he will get a lot more minutes than Holland. But also, having watched the Above Average FPL podcast on the bonus point system, or BPS, uh, Kevin De Bruyne is just an absolute machine when it comes to bonus points. So if he gets an assist in a game, it's typically a five or a six point assist, because he's going to be sweeping up bonus points um, with that assist, just given the way he plays, his pass completion, the amount of um, key passes and big chances that he sets up he's just an absolute machine and so I'm a lot more ha happy captaining him across 90 minutes than I am for captaining Holland, who may not even make it to 60 for the first four game weeks if he gets pulled off before 60 minutes and Kevin De Bruyne is playing 90 week on week Kevin De Bruyne has got an extra half the amount of game time uh, to score those points and then Holland does um, just by being on the pitch and he's a quality player so that's my very short list of reasons as to why I'm dodging Holland. And you'll see on screen that I've put Martial in place. Now a lot of managers out there on Twitter have been having a look around the big decisions are between uh, Kane or ha Holland, and so I th should also discuss here exactly why I'm going Spursless um, too, but I'll just start with Martial. Martial's been in form pre-season, he started every match and played right up to the point in which Ten Hag switches out his um, key 11 players. And so it looks like him, Sancho and Rashford are the most likely players to start the season. Now obviously there's Ronaldo sitting in the wings and that is a big concern to me at the moment which is why in this draft I have left 1.0 million in the bank to probably go Jesus up front instead of Martial for the assurity of minutes um, in the case where I fear Ronaldo may take the minutes off Martial. So yeah, Martial is a big risk. Uh, I'm aware of that um, for the whole Ronaldo thing, but come game week one, I do have the money in this squad to upgrade him to the likes of Jesus and be a, be a lot more assured of the minutes moving forward. Now, Kane and Son, why have I discluded them from my team? Well, to start with, last season um, results against their first two opponents Southampton and Chelsea uh, don't make for great reading so game week two South uh, Spurs will play Chelsea 
and in last season's fixtures, Spurs lost to Chelsea 3-0 and 2-0, both home and away. So they didn't score one goal and had five conceded against them. Now, Spurs obviously have moved along a little bit further um, with a lot more training under Conte and some new players and new signings in the transfer window. So they could be a brand new team. Also, Southampton obviously have been making... Well, their team's actually probably got a little bit weaker in opponent in terms of opponents. Uh, but I was, I'm also not too sure exactly how Southampton are going to line up against um, against Spurs. Now, if we have a look at the previous results from last year against Spurs, uh, Spurs playing Tottenham specifically, they actually lost last year at home against Southampton 3-2. Um, and in the reverse fixture, when they went to play Southampton at Southampton's own ground, they drew one all with Southampton actually conceding a red card. And so, I mean, Tottenham has scored three goals across two fixtures, so that is relatively good reading for their strike force in Kane or Sun. Those two will most likely sweep up all the points and maybe Kulisiski gets in there with an assist or something along the way. But it'll mostly be Kane or Son. However, it does not look like they're going to go out and absolutely batter Southampton like Liverpool did last year when they beat them 5-0. I think Liverpool scored five goals in one fixture or 5-0, 5-1 or something like that. It was, it was quite a... <laughs> <laughs> quite a quite a game to watch for Southampton. We're trying to actually play quite high up the pitch, and Liverpool absolutely rolled them. So I don't know if they adjusted their strategy specifically for the Tottenham games, having you know had such defeat last year. But the Southampton fixture game week one doesn't look as tasty as what it potentially looks like on paper, just given last season's results. So definitely something to keep in mind um, the reason that I've gone to Spur, uh, to City instead of Spurs so obviously Kevin De Bruyne could have been Sun for the same price in midfield or Martial could be Kane up front for 11.5 instead of Kevin De Bruyne's 12 and I could go slightly higher than 7 in midfield so I could choose like a 7.5 uh, rated player with my 1.0 still sitting in the bank however the problem with starting with Kane for example is if Kane doesn't bang against Southampton and then goes off to face Chelsea game week two and you feel like you want to run away from Kane where do you run to you're either going to run to Haaland who probably didn't get the minutes in the first game May, he may have absolutely dominated in the 60 minutes that he got on the pitch, but he also might not have. And that's also a bit of a risk. So jumping off Kane, if you do choose to start with Kane, the, the switch that everyone is looking at is Kane to Haaland in game week two to jump onto that Bournemouth fixture. But are you really going to be keen to do that if Haaland only paid, say, 45 minutes in that first game? Or maybe he comes on at the 60 minute mark to try and just sweep up at the end of the game and only plays 30 minutes. I mean, these things are all very high potential options. We don't know what Pep's going to do. We haven't had enough preseason to see what they're up to, apart from the fact that we know that Holland has said he doesn't want to be flogged and he's not actually playing the minutes. So Pep's listening to what Holland has asked for which makes me very nervous for game week one and why I've decided to chuck the money into midfield. Kevin De Bruyne is also easily transferable to Sun should you wish to jump off Man City. Um, obviously can't get to King too easily, but having the money in midfield also allows other options of jumping down to potentially even the 10 million bracket and having a look at the likes of Bruno or Sterling who are very awkwardly priced, but each potentially could do very well for their respective teams. If Ronaldo is not playing for United, you would assume Bruno G will be back on penalties and pulling the strings in midfield, and his assist rate will start jumping up. He will be the go-to man where all the, all the 
well, all the plays should be um, banging through in the midfield. We've also signed Ericsson, who haven't played, who hasn't played or hasn't started for us yet, but he is also a lethal assister with a great delivery on him and could be. <clears throat> there could be a lot of goals coming through United's games, which is why I'm quite keen to jump on Martial if Ronaldo is looking like he's not going to be starting the season. I'd more than happily play Martial for 60 minutes and have Ronaldo come on for the last 30, uh, than having a Haaland at 11.5 playing 60 minutes. I mean, if you compare the two in terms of value, and you've, it's just it's it's basically a no-brainer for me. But that relies on Martial starting the season so nice short and sweet video we're only going into those two topics on this one today uh pretty big topics indeed no no Kane no Sun no Holland. I mean these are huge players to be you know uh dis dissing it's the wrong word but discounting uh discounting at this point of the season Obviously, we're still a week and a half out and the Community Shield will give us a lot more info as to what's going on. But I've been watching Kevin De Bruyne pre-season in these games and he looks like a man on fire. He looks like he's out to prove a point. That 4-0, uh, four goals that he scored against Wolves late last season is still fresh in my memory, having not owned Kevin De Bruyne. And so potentially there's a little bit of bias there, but the man is a footballing god. Oh, happily put my faith in him over a less proven brand new to the team Holland up front for the same price out that's my reasoning anyway if you did like that content please do give this video a like and please do subscribe to get notified for more videos coming your way and if you think I'm completely bonkers and I could quite well be completely bonkers drop us a comment below and let me know what you think I have missed out on my analysis and until next time I will see you again soon. Cheers.